I'm going to explain to you co-dominance uh, and I'm going to use the example of the ABO uh, blood typing or the blood groups that we find in human beings. Now, I just want to say at the start that the ABO system is just one blood type that we have in humans. There are actually more than 30 different blood types that have been described in humans. And this is the most well-known one. So you probably know your blood type. You uh, could be O positive or negative or A positive, negative, B positive, negative or AB positive or negative. Uh, blood type O is the most common blood type, but it is actually the recessive alleles that we find in type O. And that's why we write this with a little i, little i, because of that recessiveness. In type A blood, we write the genotype for that blood as IA, IA because it is a dominant uh, allele, two of them, or we can have this type of type A blood, one dominant allele with one recessive allele. But both of those is considered type A blood. The same thing happens with type B blood. You have two dominant alleles together in the homozygous uh, dominant condition, or you could have the heterozygous condition. What is interesting though is that type AB blood is co-dominant. So you have both the A and the B allele and they are equally shown and that's why we call that blood type AB. So it's not a mix of blood A and blood B, it's actually a unique blood type. So if you want to uh, study the inheritance pattern of blood types, uh, you need to do a couple parent crosses to show what possible blood types the children can inherit. So let's start and we start with a type A blood and we cross it with a type B blood in the parent generation. And this is going to be a, a monohybrid cross type of punnet that we're going to draw. So you just need a little block with four squares. And let's say that this type A blood is the homozygous dominant type. So we write that in there for the one parent and we write the type B blood which is say the homozygous dominant type in there. If we combine those alleles just like we learned to do a little a monohybrid cross uh, you'll see that the only possible blood type here that the children can have oops that's I is uh, AB type AB that's all. But now if we consider these other genotypes, what if we have this kind of type A blood crossed with this time type of type B blood? Let's look at that scenario. So we're looking at the two heterozygous type of type A and B blood. So we're going to put those alleles here. Um, for the two parents and now we do the same thing. We combine them in the punnet. There we have a type AB blood. Over here we're going to have type B blood. Then here we'll have type A blood and look what happens here when you combine the two recessive alleles you get a type O. So you can make type AB blood, A blood, B blood or type O blood. So typically how I would ask this in uh, your upcoming test is I will ask you uh, could it be possible if we have a parent that is type AB uh, crossed with a parent that is type B and I'll tell you it is the, the heterozygous type for example to produce type O children. So you have to do some test crosses to see if that's possible. So let's write the genotype just one more time so that you see how to do this. That is AB, but for B, we're going to have to consider two different types of genotypes, right? Is it going to be this one or is it going to be this one? Well, if I tell you it's the heterozygous one, you know you have to choose that one. If I don't tell you, if I just say it's type B, then you have to consider both. So let's draw these punnets. Let's put IA. B here for type AB and then we start with that first one. Uh, I'm just going to do a test cross. What if it was this one and not that one? Well then here you'll see you can make type AB blood and you can make type B blood but it is the homozygous dominant type B blood. 
So then this would not be possible, right? You would not be able to have a type O child if the one parent is AB and the other one is homozygous. Uh, sorry, uh, yes, homozygous dominant for type B. But what if we consider this type? Is it going to change anything? Well, let's put IA, IB there at the top of our planet and we put this one uh, here on the side, the type B heterozygous. Let's combine those alleles. And then you'll notice that we can make type A blood and type B blood, both of the heterozygous kind. We can also make AB and the homozygous B type, but still no type O. So over here we could make AB only, over here AB, B and A, no type O. So your answer would be no, that is not possible. However, there's one scenario that I want to point out that is very interesting. Remember I said that there are more than 30 different kinds of blood in humans and one such a rare uh, blood type is called the Bombay phenotype. And it was discovered for the first time in India, in Bombay. And what happens here is an H gene is missing and that causes a dominant allele to behave like a recessive allele. So literally what can happen is in this example here, if, we, if I cross this out with a red and I replace this with an I, little I, this can act as a type of O blood, but it is known as Bombay phenotype type O. And of course it could happen here as well because there's another homozygous dominant allele. So that could act as a type um, O blood as well. But as I said, that is rare. It's only about 0.0004% of the human population that has the Bombay phenotype. So if you, if you do consider that in one of your answers, you know, I'll give you a bonus point if you mention that that's possible. But with this normal uh, a genotype scenario, so you see it's not possible for a parent with type AB or B blood to make type O children.